When I was at university, uh, in my final year of undergrad studies, uh, we, had, we were asked to give a presentation on a science topic. Now, I did not get to choose a science topic because I wasn't around when the topic was selected uh, by the students. So I got what everyone else rejected. My topic was artificial parthenogenesis. Now, for those of you who might not know what parthenogenesis is, uh, there is such a thing as natural parthenogenesis, and under certain artificial conditions, the same situation can be replicated. And what parthenogenesis means is the ability for a woman to give birth to a child without ever having had sex. So um, I took up the topic uh, because I had no choice. And of course, I was deeply distressed because I had to present in front of, you know, 40 or 50 people and I had never spoken in front of an audience before. Nobody gave me any presentation tips or what I might be prepared for. And, and this was pre-internet days. I had to find a book on this topic because we had to go to the library and put our name in and request for a book. All of that was pretty hard. So it, I had to go through a lot of struggle just to find enough material on the topic to be able to speak uh, on it with some degree of confidence. Now, when I spoke, the one thing that I had in my favor, I guess, was my sense of humor and my ability to connect it with the story. Well, when I spoke, I made the connection that if Mother Mary, if it was an, indeed an immaculate conception, and since a, a woman giving birth to a child without sex is always has a girl child, then Either the birth of Jesus Christ was a miracle, or he was a woman, and he kept the fact hidden from us. Well, for some reason, that point that I made seemed to really uh, or strike the audience in the right way. I mean, they laughed, they were entertained, they were willing to listen to the dull, boring, scientific stuff, as well as I got invited to, I think, must have been about 40 other speaking occasions uh, at universities. Uh, in the audience uh, of one of those was a Spanish scientist. His name was Pedro Santa Maria. And he lived in France with his French wife. And he invited me to come and give a talk at the National uh, Scientific Research Center in Paris. Uh, I, simultaneously, I had got this scholarship to go to France. Now, because I stepped out, out of my comfort zone for speaking, and because I got this invitation from Pedro to come and speak at that center and the scholarship, it kind of overrode my parents' objections a little bit because they had been very nervous about my going to a country where I did not speak the language, did not have any relatives or friends or anyone at all who could look after me. And I'd led a pretty sheltered existence prior to that. So there I was in France. Uh, at the end of a year or two that I was there, I really mastered the language, the fluency of it. And because of that situation, I was uh, later on in my very first job, I was sent to Europe to start their office in Paris because I was the only one. There were very few Indian people who spoke French at the time. Once again, I had no sales training. Nobody had told me what to prepare in, in a corporate environment. This was my very first job, pretty much. No sales training, no friends, no connections, no contacts, no house, completely out of my comfort zone, with the one exception. I now had somewhat the language, but I wasn't that, you know, culturally um, uh, ready to fit into the Western working environment. But there I was trying to start a career and meet people and make connections and bring business into the company. And in less than two years, I had generated $2 million in business. Everything that I wanted in life has only come about because I was willing to take that leap off the cliff into the dark, blindfolded, and I have always seemed to land on my feet, not just landed on my feet, but thrived. Jack Canfield says, everything you want in life lies on the other side of fear. But I now understand the principle of stretching outside of your comfort zone, but within your gift zone. And somehow, through some kind of miraculous happenings, when you take that leap, the world rises up to meet you and you begin to get everything that you want. So take that leap.